Right guys, welcome back. Uh, in an unprecedented move, we are breaking protocol, we're going back to back. I have to bring uh, Karisa back on uh, because since the last episode, there's been quite a few significant goings on in the country up and, up and down. It isn't great. Uh, it's in relation to the kind of rioting and the anti-immigration rhetoric that's kind of just swept the nation. And uh, Karisa contacted me and felt that it would be a really good prime opportunity just to quickly get back on and get some kind of uh, discussion going amongst the community and, and to talk about it. So we'll avoid the long intros and we'll just go straight into it. Karisa, set us off. Okay, so Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, obviously, we, uh, we, we're discussing this in the clamor of what's going on um, with the far right. There's a lot of protests, a lot of riots, chaos, seems to be a lot of hatred, uh, a lot of rhetoric against immigrants, against Muslims, uh, a lot of violence, police, police officers being attacked, uh, mosques being attacked, um, and and all of this. And then, and then in the background, we have, of course, um, uh, you know, rumors that the, 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 there's more protests coming. Um, so we just need uh, a bit of clarity on of what's going on and, and how to deal with it, really. Okay. So just to kind of set the scene a little bit, uh, one of the things that we had was, you could say it's not necessarily a trigger for it, but just it's kind of like almost in the warm up to it. There was the incident with the people in Manchester Airport. Uh, long and short of it, it is a legal matter. Um, so there is, you know, various conversations about, you know, how it started, what the real cause was, this, this, that, the other. But that was almost like one little match that set off a little tinderbox because once, once that footage came out, um, you could go to any kind of Twitter feed or social media feed and it was full of kind of far-out opportunists saying, look at these Pakistanis, look at these Pakistanis, they're beating up female coppers, this, 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 that, the other. So that's one thing that's kind of happened. And then there was a horrific, horrific incident in Southport where, you know, three girls were stabbed, you know, they were murdered. It was absolutely disgusting. But on the back of that, so bear in mind that you've already got this kind of already fervor whipped up and there's already a little bit of heat. All of a sudden, someone's kind of spread the rumor that the person's a Muslim, he's an immigrant, he came off a boat and he's the one that did it. And then that's just whipped up a frenzy. Again, it was false. It wasn't real information, it was misinformation, but that's kind of like set off a sequence of events. And before you know it, we, we are where we are now. And, uh, you know, what have you got any advice as to what how, how we should even be approaching this? Because right now we've got people that, I'll be honest, there's some people who are kind of, you could call it a game in the sense that they're, they're thinking, yeah, we don't mind getting involved, having a little protest and stuff. And it's the reality, there are lads that want to do that. There's some people that are quite hands off and quite worried and don't want to, you know, put themselves in a position where they might, you know, get uh, in trouble with the police or anything like that. I mean, like, what what can you even do in a situation like this? Uh, well, you got to understand the nature of what's going on and 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 how it's it's it's, it's, it's come about. Uh, for you know, for almost twenty years now, there's been a rhetoric, um, especially uh, recently, um, on immigration and the fact that the Im immigrants are causing all of these issues. Um, but when you look at the background of, of what's going on as well, is is we're living in a in a cost of living crisis. There's a lot of uh, difficulties. There's a lot of uh, problems that people have. Whether you're Muslim, non-Muslim, it doesn't matter. Um, so many people are going through so many troubles. Um, you know, um, you just to put food on the table. Uh, look at all these waits at hospitals. People are ill. They're not getting seen. Um, you've got the pressures, financial pressures, mental health issues. You've got all of these issues. Uh, um, you know. Um, combined um, and then the rhetoric has been that these problems that you have is because of a certain group yeah. um, and, and and this rhetoric has been coming uh, from politicians uh, but also from social media influencers uh, likes of Toby Robinson um, and, 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 and others um, and basically it's it's a case of um, uh, you know, so they've, they've got this rhetoric going, and it's a case of of saying to people, "Look, the reason you don't have a job is because that job's been taken over by immigrants. Mm -hmm. The reason why you can't get a hospital appointment, or the reason why, you know, say, let's say, for example, um, I'm a white person, uh, my mum's in hospital, I've taken her to hospital, and I've seen her, th uh, you know, sit in a corridor for thirty six hours. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Let's just say, for example, yeah. right? She's not been seen, um, and then um, you know, I'm I'm hearing from not just newspapers, from media, from all from all angles. The reason she can't be seen in hospital is because there's too many immigrants. Mm. You know, the, so these are the issues, um, and and what's happening behind the scenes is there's a certain group of people at the top, and what they're doing is they're using this as an excuse uh, to cause chaos. There's hatred. They, they want chaos. They want civil unrest. They, they literally they're setting a trap for people. Yeah. Um, not just for Muslims, but also non-Muslims. And and the rhetoric has been, you know, you go on Twitter or the or X as it's called now, um, you hear these social media influencers um, prom- promoting violence, promoting chaos, um, and and that's where we're at at the moment. Actually, is is. Uh, we're at that level where um, the civil unrest is chaos. Um, a lot of it's been blamed on Muslims. A lot of it's been blamed on immigrants. Uh, but the reality is, really, is 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 something different. Um, there's there's a lot of reasons why people are going to riot, um, and and not necessarily to do with immigrants, but it's it's something within. So, um, say for example, I'm struggling with my own life, and there's no peace within me, and then I'm going through difficulties. It's, it's very easy for someone to go out and say, right, let me take my frustrations out. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, and a lot of the rioters, to be honest, um, I have sympathy for them. I do. You know, when you look at their, uh, you look at their lives and you, you look at what most of, what must go through someone's head uh, to burn down a, ho- a hotel, for example, with people inside it. What must go through someone's head? What must they have gone through in their life so, mm. you know, you have to have empathy for people. Um, a lot of it is also um, the fact that there's so many people uh, within the country who feel that nobody cares for them. And I touched upon this in the last po- podcast as well. Yeah. There's this people, uh, you know, there's so many people, they say, right, the politicians don't care about us, nobody cares about, nobody listens to us. And, uh, um, you know, n- there's nobody out for us and nobody looking out for us. And this is why you saw the collapse of, of, of the vote in the recent election for both Labour and Conservatives. Mm-hmm. People are actually abandoning the political parties, the mainstream parties. For example, Labour received 2 million votes less than in 2019 yeah. in, this, in this last election. So what people are turning to is they're turning to alternatives. They're like saying, a, right, so, reform. yeah, Nigel Farage has come along and then you've got people like Tommy Robinson um, and they're saying, look, there's an alternative. And the alternative is, 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 is let's, 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 let's look at these immigrants coming in. Um, and, and, and that's why, uh, you know, we need as a, as a community, we need to show people that we do actually care. Um, and, and, and a lot of these issues are coming from, um, you know, the rhetoric that's coming from uh, the government, as ministers, as home secretaries have been talking about, you know, certain things. Even Elon Musk yesterday has, 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 has weighed into this and, and he's talked about civil war being inevitable in England, in the UK. Um, you know, they, they're talking up and uh, the, the certain uh, climate and, and they're talking up and, the, and this rhetoric yeah. is, is dangerous. Yeah, and I think uh, part of the problem is is that we it's becoming harder and harder to identify misinformation. So even like a case in point now where there's uh, you know talk about uh, EDL or what was the EDL? You know, groups of protesters saying we're going to, we're going to come to Burnley Thompson Park, we're going to come to Accrington, we're going to come X Y and Z place, and you know people are rightfully concerned. Uh, but then anything that happens, um, all of a sudden will be on WhatsApp. No verification, no kind of like you know checking. Actually, is this correct? Straight away, oh, I've just seen this happen. This has happened, and then that that message is passed around twenty times before someone can even correct it and say, "Look, this has got nothing to do with this. Just just calm down a little bit. Just just relax." So, I think better checking and you know ver- verification is probably the first stage before the community start mm. whipping themselves into a fervor, but. I think one thing, I I don't want to drag this into a political aspect of it because there's other aspects you want to talk about. But I think one thing that is a little bit disappointing is that the party that was in power, while all this is getting stoked up, because this isn't something that's built up over like over a summer. Because I know we started and we talked about the Manchester Airport incident, but that's just uncovering so, something that's been bubbling under the surface for a long time. But we had a party in power for more than a decade. And... 
they've been slowly building up, building up, building up that kind of anti-immigrant rhetoric. They were talking, they, were, they had that little thing where they were trying to get an agreement to ship people to Rwanda, uh, all stuff like that. Basically letting the, the British people know like, yeah, you know, immigration is an issue. We're dealing with it. We're dealing with it. And it becomes a kind of forefront at, at the point of discussion. But the problem is, is we've got a lot of Muslim members that were part of that party and that are still part of that party. And that to me is bearing in mind the kind of actions that we're seeing today and the fact that Vishy Sunak was also called a Paki. I hate to use that word, but he was actually called that by people that supposedly are from that same party or were have relation to that same party. It's just incredibly disappointing. Um, so I hope that the same people, and I know that they're listening, will kind of listen to this and maybe reflect a little bit because what are you going to do for your community now? You were part of that party that whipped all this up in the first place. But that's just me ranting. That, so so I don't want to drag you into the politics of your anyone and we don't want to take you down that road. But what do you think in terms of like today you've put a call out uh, and you were part, involved with some of the mustards where they've all kind of gotten together and they made a joint statement. Do you want to just tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, I'll, I'll touch upon the statement uh, just in terms of politics and the rhetoric. Um, there has been uh, from government ministers a rhetoric about stop the boats, um, this uh, sort of illegal immigrants and illegal uh, immigration and, and all these people coming over illegally. The words like invading Britain, invading you know our country, they they basically coming over here, taking our jobs, and then they put into five star hotels and four star hotels, and 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 they're living off the state, and then you know the wider population are not getting anything, and then all yeah. of these people are you know being treated like this, um, and then you talk about you know I know I know Nigel Farage mentioned uh, 1.2 million people coming into the country use that figure. 1.2 million people coming into the country um, then you have newspapers like the daily mail talking about an invasion uh, you, you know you hear about um, uh, from social media commentators talking about all of these issues um, when you combine all of this and this has been going on for a number of years the average person listening to all of this uh, is, is starting to think hang on a minute we're being invaded here yeah yeah, we're actually, you know, because everyone uh, it seems is, is mentioning this now, right? Um, but the reality is, is something completely different. Uh, for example, the 1.2 million uh, that the figure uh, they come out with, yes, in 2023, 1.2 million people came from abroad into this country. Yeah, right. There's no doubt about that, um, and it's a lot. It's actually a lot. And, and yes, these people are, are wanting schools and they're wanting hospitals and they're wanting, you know, all of these services. However, when you actually look at the, the stats behind it, you realize actually, you know what, they didn't come illegally. Hmm. The vast majority of this 1.2 million were actually made up. They came to work in the health service, the social, care, yeah. social care, social um, care. Uh, a lot of them came as students student visas to you know to attend universities right and that's the bulk of the immigration right asylum seekers actually in 2023 there was a, a not the 1.2 million it wasn't an invasion of asylum seekers we're talking about uh, roughly about 80,000 after 1.2 million right which is a small percentage of, of the number of uh, people who've come over and the, the people who have come over the vast majority if they didn't come over, our health service would collapse. Yeah, like you've got a lot of uh, like nursing staff. And yeah. Stuff like that, yeah. So at the moment, just at the moment right now in the health service, you've got social care. There's quarter of a million job vacancies mm -hmm. that the population of this country cannot fill. Yes. So what's happened is they've turned to immigration and, and, and they said, right. So, um, you know, the, so, the, so those who say like, um, you know, the, the, we've no jobs because of the uh, immigrants, there's a quarter of a million jobs in the in the care industry and in, in the health service. Right? Let's get trained up and let's start doing these jobs. Yeah. yeah. So we won't, we won't need to rely on people coming from abroad to work. Yeah. Um, you know, so um, the in terms of the invasion, uh, even the students, if the students were not coming over, our university systems would collapse yeah. because of, of the tuition fees that we charge overseas students. Right. It's, it's, a lot, it's a lot more than the standard 9,000, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it's a lot more. Uh, and we need their thousands, you know, we need their thousands just to sustain our university system. So the, so the reality really is, is there's been a failure at the top to manage the health system, to manage our social care system. And, and, and uh, you know, there's tens of thousands of people who are leaving the NHS every year. 
because of the stress and the conditions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right. Um, so um, I think um, a lot of there's been a diversion in in the sense that uh, the, the, those at the top they don't want you to focus on these sort of issues, and it's so easy to blame the so sort of immigrants coming over. Um, so this rhetoric has been going on for a, for a number of years now, um, and and we need to call it out for what it is. To be honest, yeah, because the the problem is the rhetoric is it's really simple to digest because you can go to say, oh, I'm trying to get a doctor's appointment. I can't get a doctor's appointment, and then it's like two plus two equals. Therefore, Britain is full. We sh- we shouldn't be welcoming any more people in. You know, this, this, that, the other. Oh, you know, there's no facilities. I can't get a council house. Some Im- immigrants have taken it. And therefore, conclusion, uh, people are coming to is just along those lines. But I think part of the problem is, is just about changing the narrative so people can actually understand that you should think actually, well, if the people at the top hadn't cut funding so much, then a lot of the stuff and the, you know, the facilities, be it medical, be it even like even having youth centers, you know, little things like that, that would actually keep you occupied because they're not there anymore. Um, you should be you should be questioning them, not pointing fingers at immigrants. I mean, how do the, I mean, we, we do definitely have quite, you know, uh, a, a sizable immigration or Im- immigrant population in this area. I mean, I'm, I'm in studio now, but like in Nelson, uh, Burnley, Bryfield, you know, there is, and I, I wonder how they feel with all this going on. I'll give you an example. Uh, we have a, um, a, um, a brother from Sudan. He came over on the illegal boats. You know, he came uh, on the on the boat. Sorry, and 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 when he landed, he claimed asylum. Um, and only a, um, you know um, a month ago, he was saying, "Look, this country is fantastic in the sense that uh, in Sudan, uh, if I was to leave my house, they would kill me. You know, they're looking they're looking for men like me, and they would shoot." And, and uh, he had to flee from Sudan um, and to seek asylum in this country. And he was saying, "What a fantastic country! I can go wherever I want, and I can, I can, I feel safe." Right? Uh, just yesterday, he came into the mosque, um, mm. and he looked at me, and um, you know, almost with tears in his eyes, and he said, um, "I don't feel safe anymore here. Um, are, are people trying to get me here? Do they not like me?" They don't want me here because he's seeing all these, you know, hotels uh, being demolished and burnt, and where asylum seekers are, asylum seekers getting um, targeted. Uh, so he doesn't feel this country safe anymore for him. Um, you know, and, th- and this is someone coming from a war zone. Yeah, this is someone coming from a war zone. Uh, there's, there are people living in fear. There's within the community here. There's people who 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 not been leaving their houses. Um, there's there's a lot of women who've cancelled a lot of their activities and a lot of their groups. Um, there, there, there are people, I mean, the town hall today was shut. Well, wow. yeah, just think about the town hall was shut. The staff were too scared. Um, you know, um, so there's, there's a, a lot of fear has, has been created. And that is the whole point of this, is to create fear. fear. Um, and so a lot of this mis- misinformation is there to create fear, right? Fear of, 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 of what might happen and fear of other people. Um, and, and this is what exactly the, the trap's been set. And, and part of that is to create fear amongst people, um, to divide people, to have hatred for people and, and to cause chaos. And once you have fear, so you have all these text messages coming in that the EDL might be in Nelson today. Yeah. Yes. Um, just to create fear. Yes, um, and what they want is they set a trap now, and, and the trap basically is they want the Muslim community to come out uh, down to their levels and have a good scrap. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And if we do that, all it takes is, I mean, look, you're obviously a bit older than me, but I still remember from when the, you know, the riots from the, you know, way 2001, back, yeah. Those riots, I still remember at that time, there still, there were lads who, I mean, it sounds trivial compared to what we've seen on the news now, but there were, there were people who kind of like just maybe I just picked up a brick and thrown it, which, it's the wrong thing to do. You shouldn't be doing it in the first place. But that one action was like an immediate, you know, custodial sentence. There were, there were people, you know, getting heavy, heavy sentences, hefty sentences. Can't get my words out. But I could easily see our young lads who are already kind of fired up, already angry. I could easily see them walk, literally walking into a trap. Like we can see it all being set up. All it's going to take is a couple of these guys to turn up to Burnley. And a few guys are going to lose their temper, especially if it's like a summer's day and it's a bit warm. It's just going to be, you know, that that combination of factors. And that really worries me because 
the what we have to understand is I'm sorry now I'm speaking from like the the Muslim perspective um, is that the odds are not stacked in our favor so you might think that okay if we kind of get together and we fight back we're doing the right thing and I, I'm not saying it's wrong to do that I want to be very clear but well, you have to be super careful about how you go about it because there was some footage of some people uh, I, th- I think some some rioters tried to kind of come into the area and they've basically they've dealt with them and you know what dealt with them in a, phew, they, they really dealt with them but the problem is is that same clip that they, those people took the starting part was cut uh, off with no context and all that was presented on Twitter was a lot of Asian guys beating up some rioters now what people don't realize is that footage is then going viral I'm talking millions of people have seen it through like various social media channels and as far as they're concerned it's these Muslims are going wild because it's not stacked in our favor we're not smart in that sense so we need to be really careful that this is it's more than a trap it's basically uh, sealing our own fate to be honest you know the um, you will you will see images you will see videos um, and the idea is to provoke yeah. uh, you saw the graves at Burnley Burnley Cemetery yeah. damaging graves you know these are people who've passed away the deceased yet um, you know, damaging their graves is for the simple reason to provoke someone to provoke, you know, a group of people to do something. You know, so they will. You will see things that make us angry. You will be see things that you know give us uh, these feelings of, you know, wanting to do something. Um, and and that's the trap. And you know, um, for the EDL and and the far right, uh, they've already trapped a lot of young working class white people. Yeah. They've fallen for that trap. Yep. They've fallen for it, right? And a lot of them, to be honest, if you ask them about immigration, they don't have a clue. Yeah, they yeah, They don't have yeah. a clue. Yeah. But they've fallen for that trap, right? And now the next trap is to bring out the Muslims as well right, and cause this chaos. Yeah, it's going to be the... Yes. Just a... um, and, and, and I feel sorry for some of those, you know, the, those lads. Honestly, those... You know, you could be a, a I don't know, a seventeen, eighteen year old, a grown up on a council estate somewhere, and and you know you've had a, a tough life, maybe from a broken family. You've had all of these issues and all of these issues. Next minute, you know, um, a group of your friends are, are just targeting the police, and you think, all right, you know what? Well, let me, let me, let me, let me go there as well, right? And this exactly happened to the, the, uh, to the people in Burnley. So for picking up a stone, you get five years in prison. No, let's just right. say, right? Yeah. And and you, you end up throwing a stone at the police. And if someone was to ask you about immigration and why are you here, you don't know. You know, one of the um, guys who got um, um, sentenced today, uh, I think he was in his 58. Wow. And in court, he actually said, I don't know why I did what I did. I don't know what came over me. It's too late for him. He's it's, like, it's, like a, it's like a red mist that just descends over people and just yeah. got boggled. I, I, I think he's got three years. I think, uh, yeah, something like three years. He said, I don't know why I did what I did. It just, something just came over me. You see, that's a trap. He's trapped. He's fallen for that trap. And now he's going to be in prison thinking, oh my God, why did I do that? Why did I go there? Why did I pick up a brick or whatever it was he did? And the same is going to happen to the Muslims. That's what they're trying to do is get the youth out, is is get them angry, provoke them and get them to do something that they're going to regret. Right. And and this is and, and this is how you defeat you defeat this by just staying calm, patient and don't, you know, lower your standards to those of thugs. Right. Let's be patient. And will you see this, the fire that's been set Honestly, it will fizzle out very quickly if we tr- if we sort of ignore it. Be patient, be calm, right? And this message is out not just for the Muslim youth, but also to our 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 uh, you know white uh, br- brothers. They are brothers. Yeah. We're human. We yes. uh, in humanity, right? The young uh, lads, you know, um, white young lads don't fall for this trap. Honestly, you know, a lot of those people who are uh, even, you know, throwing stones and damaging mosques and hotels, they've fallen for this trap. That's what's happened. And and I feel for them. I do. I do. And it's those people at the top who are cre- cre- creating all of this, causing all of this. They're laughing. And they're laughing. Yeah. And they're laughing, you know, uh, because if you think about it, asylum seekers, for example, those people who were born uh, abroad and, and, and originally came as asylum seekers, they make up 0.6% of the population, not even 1%. So how can 1% of the population cause all the entire nation's problems? 
it just doesn't add up. Yeah, but the rhetoric is there, um, and my message is honestly to, uh, uh, and I keep saying lads, and it's usually the lads who are, uh, whether you're Asian, you're white, you're Muslim, don't fall for this trap. What and, about and, though? But, so some of these young lads who end up in prison, you know, they've, they've got parents and they'll be thinking, you know, I've lost my son, I've lost my son for three, four, five years, whatever it is. Yeah. But the thing is, what about if there's, so this, this is kind of, it's going to put you on the spot a little bit, but if you're in a situation where, like even now, there's a few WhatsApp groups and they're all, and one of the main points of concern, and it's a, it's a valid point, you know, what if they want to march on the mosque? What if they, you know, try and target a masjid and stuff like that? And it would be good to have a presence there just to kind of like, so it's not like a completely unpopulated area and it's not like a walk in the park. And, you know, what what do you even do in a situation like that? Bash, I had this conversation with someone. I said to him, if you want a presence at the mosque, yes, five times a day, uh, we, we actually invite you to have a presence at the mosque. We will love you to, for you to come to the mosque, you know, to the masjid. Come and read your namaz and that is your presence. Yes. Now, the thing here is, is uh, you know, my advice would be let the police do um, what they need to do. And they are, and they, and they have a tough job of, you know, um, you know, um, let the let the police handle this because what's going to happen is, say for example, and this this is this this will happen if we're not careful. You get a text message, yeah, yeah, saying outside a certain mosque there's a, there's a group of lads and they, and they're gonna smash it or they're gonna burn it or they're gonna firebomb it or whatever, right? So. Uh, right, I, I hear the message, look at the message, and I say, right, you know what? Let me call a few lads. We need to defend the mosque. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, we yeah. need to defend the mosque, right? And and so I end up at the mosque. There's no one there. Next minute, there's two white lads walking past, minding their own business, right? Nothing to do with any, you know. There's no intention to do harm. We see two. Right there, they are. There they are. Yeah. Let's get them. Yeah, and the cycle continues. This is the misinformation. Leave it to the police. The police will, and honestly, this, this, it will fizzle out. It will fizzle out, right? It always does. We need to stay patient. We need to stay patient. Yes, we need to stay in our homes, protect your own families, you know, um, don't let anyone in the house, etc., etc. right? Um, as for the mosques, honestly, um, we have Allah, you know, um, the, uh, we we protect it. Don't worry. Um, and those of you who want a presence in the mosques, you know, I invite you all to just come inside and let's pray together, inshallah. And so, just for context, if anyone hasn't seen the previous video that I've done with Karisab, Karisab is the actual Imam of a masjid talking. It's, this isn't just you know <laughs> some someone learning just saying something. So there is obviously um, you know you're you're saying this yourself. Um, and one thing you know what this is quite bad to say this but throughout this like you know while all this has been going on like we've not really well i'm sure you have but it's not really that kind of click but to think about like you know the impact on the women as well you know the sisters as well especially in like it's supposed to be some holidays you know big kids impact. everything like that a lot of women they, they, they're not taking their kids out anywhere they're stuck at home uh living in fear uh, because usually what happens is to provoke you know all of this you uh, a lot of these people they, they target women Yes, there's women, yeah. uh, especially those who are alone, who wear hijabs. There's a lot of instances we've, we've seen where women's hijabs have been taken off, etc., etc. There's a lot of fear amongst our sisters um, about what might happen, you know. And uh, again, it's all there to cause this fear, you know. Uh, same with the same same with the white women. Yeah, uh, this fear uh, being put in that immigrants or rapists. Tommy Robinson has been using these words. They come to our country, they rape our daughters. And and, and just, just what happened in Southport, uh, this misinformation that it was a Muslim immigrant who had come off the boat last year and he caused three of our daughters to die. Yeah, he killed three of our daughters. And, 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 the, and I saw the clip on on, uh, on Twitter and, and the message to, 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 to the people of this country is what are you going to do about it? Are you going to let them kill our daughters, rape our... So again, it's causing fear amongst you know the white population as well right and it's this fear um, that's that's been caused and that's part of the plan is to is to have is to put this fear into people so as a takeaway so as we uh, start rounding off because we've hit the half hour mark so one of the thing rounding points with this is is that or what i'm kind of taking away from it is there is you do have an aspect of empathy 
with you know some of the people that are doing this not not to say that you're condoning what they're doing but you do see that they some of these guys who are doing this have literally grown up in like a vacuum they're from poor unprivileged you know working class even if, if they are working backgrounds they're literally in a vacuum and they only have like say said media that's feeding them just crap and misinformation throughout like 24 7 they probably don't bump into any you know brown people muslim people much and if they do they might you know just by the, the way things go they might meet someone that maybe doesn't have a strong english accent or something and all of a sudden you know you've got all these factors building up building up building up and then they're getting told that they're the true patriots you know they're the true people that look after this country and they need to defend their country and then all these factors are building up and then you got that these little flashpoints these kind of factors these little things points in time that are happening and the rage meter is just going building up and up and up and then they they're kind of almost having an outlet like just for the guys at home i'm not trying to justify doing that why they're doing what they're doing but i am trying to get some context as be as to try and understand you know the, the what's behind it all because if you don't understand the context then how are you going to resolve it i guess but is would that be a fair summary i think so yes i have a lot of empathy for a lot of these people um you know it's not been in, it's not easy uh, trying to survive and and and, and seeing your mum struggle to put food on the table you know maybe dad's walked out there's a lot of issues um you know maybe you've not done well at school you've got no real job prospects there's no way out of this for you um, and 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 you feel that nobody listens to me nobody cares the politicians don't care the leaders don't care nobody cares for me yes um and i do have empathy for them and and these are people being used by 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 those at the top right as as pawns and a feel for them honestly i do uh, even you know even if someone was and this is the way of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is to understand uh, you know everyone right yeah. and and he sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was you know he was stoned uh, you know he was he used to be covered in blood from head to toe and he used to pray for these people yes and we need to follow the example of the prophet and we pray for these people yes that they're troubled we we pray that you know god gives them that peace that they're looking for uh, you know that that peace that love that they're looking for they're craving out for someone just to put their arm around them and to say look look mate i care for you you know you i understand you yeah. i understand you yes we might be a different color but i actually understand you and and this will happen in in liverpool, liverpool you know, i was uh, going to mention yeah. that one now yeah um, at the abdullah kulia museum uh masjid yeah. um and um what had happened is the you know they were expecting protesters so they made all these burgers no no you 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 like your burgers as well yeah yeah um so um and then they went out and they actually you know fed them you know gave them drinks and they showed them that love and they showed them that compassion and you know you know led by uh, um star the um adam kelwick right? he went out and he actually put his arms around them and he said look i'm here i care for you i'm here to listen and the entire mood changed their hearts changed they found someone there's someone here who's actually listening to me and they said you know what you're not too bad after all honestly people just want someone to put an arm around them to say look i care for you i'm here for you i listen i'm listening i understand you yes and this is what the vast majority of people working class people whether you're muslim or non-muslim they're not getting this at the moment and that frustration is coming out in these riots and and my danger and my fear is that the muslim a lot of the youth who are going through the same sort of issues yes uh, they might respond in the same way to let their frustrations out so we have to have empathy we have to pray for people we have to you know our ways of love our ways is to understand people and show them that love and and that's what they they're lacking and and they need that love they need someone to show that they care and you know as, as a muslim community those people who are listening inshallah it's time we follow the example of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and show that love to people show that love to people Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to make du'as and prayers for those who harmed him. Yes, um, you know he used to, and, and that's the way. That's our way, and and we pray, we pray for them, and we pray that you know God Allah gives them peace, and um, you know Allah guides them. You know, uh, our way is you know you know you're not a believer until you love other for others what you love for yourself. That's our religion. Yeah, yeah. So we want peace. We want them to have peace.
We want happiness, we want them to be happy. Yes, we want comforts in life, we want them to have comforts. We want, you know, so this is our way. Um, and I appeal also, I know we uh, finishing off because I just saw you look at the... Uh, Oh, not to be honest. I, I was doing it for your benefits, man. No, no, no. I, I can go on. I can I'm go on for a long time. Um, my message also is also for a lot of the uh, the British people, the white people of this country. Um, you have British values, right? And, and part of your values is to respect others. Is You are the ones who welcomed us. You know, our parents, when they came into this country, um, they came as immigrants. My father came, for example, they came as immigrants in the 60s and the 70s. Um, and, and, and they were welcomed. Yes, they were welcomed. Uh, they were needed. You know, they were needed in the factories. Yeah, and they the were needed. You know, and and they and they, yes, they worked hard, and, and to to build. You know, and they worked hard. They worked them twelve-hour shifts, and nobody else wanted. Yeah. Right. But they will also tell you that these people, the people of this country, are good people. You know, the good people. Um, and and um, my danger is that that uh, this far right have come along and, and they've taken away or they're trying to take away from the rest of the population these sort of values and and my my advice for, you know for the for population is to hold on to these values honestly uh, the people of this country generally uh, you know when you see the kind the generous these are people who care for the animals even yeah? these are people you know they, they've got great characteristics um, and and I would say to them is take your country back from the far right, yes. Don't don't let them win. Don't let hatred win. You know. Um, and 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 let's make this country one of the best countries in the world. Uh, and we can do it together. You know. Um, we we come across some great people who are non-Muslims uh, on a daily basis through the food bank. Uh, through you know our services that we offer uh, and we can do this what the world needs is peace what the world needs is love compassion agree yes and let's let's get together and do it we had a meeting today and there were some fantastic people there a lot of non-muslims and my message there was to them a lot of you are doing great work within the community the people need to see this more uh, in, in in terms of social media uh, the, the work that's going on honestly um, there's some fantastic people in this country uh, and I've met some fantastic people who are not Muslim um, and it's time that we uh, you know um, stop looking at and listening to this minority of people who are trying to take over the country with hatred and on all of this um, generally generally speaking uh, the vast majority of people in this country what they want is they just want a bit of peace they just want food on the table uh, and, and and they just want to you know and that that is it really yeah 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 you know um and let's look out for one another if you have muslim neighbors if you have non-muslim neighbors your white neighbors let's knock on their doors and say look here's a bit of food right i'm here for you we might be different color skin color doesn't matter right we're here for you let's put smiles on people's faces we can do this we can beat this is the way we're going to beat right uh, whatever you know that the, the far right are coming out with those people at the top one is keep talking about them people at the top who want this division who want this hatred we have to defeat them through love through compassion through generosity through kindness and we can do it um, and part of that is not listening to the rhetoric and, and all this nonsense and social media um, less less you know less refuse to to fall down you know let's refuse to lower our standards we're not thugs definitely not yeah you know yeah. whether you're muslim a lot of non they're not thugs they're not thugs yes let's not fall let's not lower our standards and and, and let's rise above this and 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 let's work with uh, with the love and compassion um you know and, and 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 let's treat each other as human beings treat each other you know, I'll, I'll say I'll mean to that or for the non-Muslims, Amen. <laughs> Just kind of sign, uh, you know, your statement. But no, I think that is a nice positive message. And I think it's much needed. Uh, and it kind of uh, it balances out all the kind of uh, negativity that's kind of flying through social media and some of the WhatsApp messages that are flying through as well. Just because there's a kind of a panic factor. And So you wanted to mention something uh, in instant that's happened today. Um, I don't know when this will be going out, but... Um, uh, on Southfield Street, yeah. uh, there was there was a, an incident where uh, I think two three white lads were in a car driving and they knocked down a nation lad. Yes, yep. uh, may Allah protect him and uh, I don't know what the state is, but may Allah you know protect him and keep him safe. Um, it's things like this which 
uh, this is not EDL related or anything like that. You know, um, accidents do happen. You know, for whatever reason it happened, um, and we need to we need to be careful. Is is how we view someone. Uh, you know, and and may Allah protect us all from this. Yeah, because know? what happened on the back of that was that like, literally within minutes it was like you know EDL Southfield Street. It's like yo yo just just chill out a second, just verify what you're seeing. You know what what's actually happened. Have we, have we got all the information before you're going to make such a big statement? Because that causes kind of hysteria. Because the last thing the family needs is a lot of people just turning up. And, I mean, in the Quran, Allah mentions that if you receive any news, right, verify it first. Yes, uh, otherwise it could cause someone harm. You know, if you spread that news, uh, yeah. whatever you see nowadays, we're living in times. Honestly, do not believe ninety percent of what you hear out there. It's, it's, it's just hard to verify. It's, yeah, it's, it's misinformation. My advice again, you know, um, it would be just concentrate on yourselves, concentrate on your families, give them time, give yourself time. Um, and, and and look after yourselves and and don't worry too much about what's going on around you. I know it's easy to, easy to say and more harder to do. Um, and let's spread this love. Sure. Great. Again, thank you for well, thank you for the last minute just just making this happen because I think it was quite important and quite apt to get this out. So this is being filmed in the middle of the week. I'll probably aim to get this out in a couple of days, maybe even tonight if I can. Just uh, I've got I've got a few responsibilities now. <laughs> Mashallah, you got a baby uh, girl. No, oh, Mashallah. Yeah. Yeah. I've now I've never had a chance to like tell people about it. I've just been like running around like a headless chicken. So oh, you know, that's, so that's, yeah, that's I'm gonna be a lot busier with the podcast nowadays stuff now. So, but yeah, uh, but we do or we are gonna have more episodes with you in the future. Uh, we've already had some discussions between us, and there are like a list of areas and topics that you want to cover. We're gonna make it a regular series. Like this is a bit unprecedented just just because of what's happened it's gone back to back um but there are broad areas of, you know range of topics we're going to cover with you and i do have a lot of other guests i'm going to bring on as well so hopefully we can uh, just keep the message going so i want to say again thank you inshallah just in just uh, before i go is 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 uh, never ever lose hope and we have hope and and honestly you know the, I, I read a message today someone said um why can't we live in unity and someone said fat chance of that never gonna happen so uh, honestly let's have hope and let's spread that love and and if in doubt you know the simplest thing to do is just give someone food feed people you know what i mean feed people bring that joy in and let's let's build this community and honestly my aim my, my mission still is and i mentioned the last podcast within 10 years we want nelson to be the best community in the uk Inshallah, we'll get you know, there. And we will get there. And, and we, let's do this together. Let's spread that peace and joy. And as the Prophet, one of the first things he said when he went to Medina is spread the peace. Feed people, spread the peace. And you will enter Jannah without any questions. Mashallah. There you go. So, on that note, I will, uh, and on behalf of Christ as well, we'll uh, bid you all farewell and uh, see you in the next episode.